Jones, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, minutes. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute, the podcast in which we celebrate and discuss the film Raiders of the Lost Ark one minute at a time. I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Pete Mummert. I'm Christy Porter. Uh, Christy is joining us again in the disguise of her brother Jerry, who is uh, deep in the jungles of South Africa. No, South America, let's say, um, (laughs) on assignment. Or Mexico. Or Mexico. Close enough. For our purposes. Um, He could be in Cleveland. We don't know. He's just not here right now. Uh, But we are joined again by our friends from the Alien Minute podcast. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for having us back. Hi, guys. Hello. This is fun. (laughs) Um, We are here to talk about Minute 59, which begins with uh, Indy about to dig a hole, and it ends with Sala announcing that they've hit stone. And I think, John, you were saying that you um, had something, you were teasing something uh, in the last minute about uh, something that goes on here. So this has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on in the movie. This is a totally personal anecdote. Um, And I've got to get, it's been a thing that's kind of bugged me a little bit for a long time. And uh, I want to get your your listeners' reaction to it. I want to see if anybody else out there had this experience with me. This is a safe place. Um, I, that's what I trust that it is. Okay. Um, so when I'm, a, when I was a kid, we bought this, the VHS of Raiders of the Lost Ark, probably about 1987 or so. And I wore it out. I watched it. I mean, I've seen this movie a couple hundred times and, um, but the VHS tape we had right at this moment, um, it starts in the last minute when Indy starts up the hill, uh, to the top of the well souls, you get the whole scene, you get the, the arc theme, um, he certainly, he looks around and comes over and starts to dig and you get that big swell of music. And then we cut to the, one of the most iconic shots of the movie, of course, the, the backlit Indy's putting his hat on against the sunset and you get the uh, work song from Sala's crew and they're going, Oh, do you, like that? you know, singing the song. And right as it's about to cut to them opening the well of souls, there was a glitch in my VHS tape and it would cut back oh, no. to Indy at the bottom of the hill again. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have to watch him walk up the hill and look all around and the music would swell and all of it over again, straight through the work song and the shot and everything. So every time, I, like I said, a couple hundred times, <laughs> I've seen this movie this way and um, I can't I can't turn my brain off of it to this day. When I watch this movie, when we get to that point, my brain makes that glitch happen yes. for just a second. I'm sure that it's going to do it again. I even mentioned to my sister who watched it probably about 150 of the times I watched it. And she said, I've always wondered why that song is so, in, that work song is so infectious to me. <laughs> like she's, she didn't remember that glitch, but she said, that song is just stuck in my head. I'm like, that's because you heard it twice as many times as everyone else. <laughs> so I really just wanted to throw it out there to your listeners. I want to hear, I want to see on the listeners page or however, you know, people give you feedback i want to know if anyone else experienced this too because it couldn't have been just the one tape <laughs> what, you think it was a manufacturer's uh glitch in the uh production I mean, of I the tape i'm no expert in how vhs tape works but that seems like somebody had to have kind of spliced it back in somehow <laughs> i don't know how that that's happened. incredible um, so that's my little story about this minute well it's a, it's a very catchy song even if you only oh, yeah. hear it once once yeah. per yeah. movie yeah, yeah you want to hear it again it's it's kind of crazy making if you hear it twice as many times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I did not have that experience, but I've had that kind of experience with uh, with both with VHS and just like uh, like people were talking on the Star Wars Minute Listener Society recently about um, <clears throat> oh somebody posted um, like the intro to the CBS TV version of Star Wars when they first showed it. And that was my copy of Star Wars for a long time. So I still, when I'm watching Star Wars, you know, regular, uh, I feel it go to commercial when the sand crawler is sort of cresting the hill after it's picked up uh, R2-D2. Because that's where they—that's well, where their first commercial break was on CBS. 
<laughs> well, I think Ken that listens to this show and Star Wars Minute posted uh, the int- the original intro to the the HBO intro to Empire Strikes Back. Oh yeah. Which also, when I heard that, it just I was instantly like six years old, you know, eight years old. <laughs> yeah. and it's like wow, <laughs> I hadn't thought about that or heard that for years and years, and I was instantly right back there. VHS was kind of crummy, but it made for awesome memories. <laughs> God bless it. Hey, do you think that that shot, that iconic shot that, that John was talking about with the sunset behind, is is that, in fact, Harrison Ford, or is that a double? Is that Terry Leonard? Wow, that's a good question. I would it's love be to know. Ford. Does something make you think it might not be him? Yeah, kind of the way he moves, you know, and, and I'm I'm just not sure. I just wonder whether, and it does seem like the kind of shot, you know, a second unit would pick up or something, but something about the way he moves, I always thought, I don't know, is he that? Is he that gangly? I don't know. It's very <laughs> Mitch, Mitch, I think you've just asked the question you shouldn't have asked. This might be the one question. That shot is so <laughs> iconic. You know, I don't, you're not only suggesting it's not Harrison Ford, you're suggesting that the second unit director is the one that shot it. <laughs> this is, you might be getting into the sacrilege character category here, Mitch. But what if he's know. right? <laughs> least problem he might be right. Just putting it out there. <laughs> well, maybe to reel that back in just a little bit, where did Terry Leonard keep his hat? <laughs> is, is it balled up in that little satchel? Is that where I, he's keeping his hat? That's a really good question. Could it have been in his turban? And leans over and picks it up. Yeah, is it is it bent up in his turban? I wonder. <laughs> that hat's been through so much. I don't think bending it up and throwing the turban's going to hurt it too much. No, it'll pop right back into pretty yeah. shape. Yeah. Well, he does. He takes the robe off and he picks up the hat and he puts the the hat on. And it's one of the only times he's. The um, well, it's it's one of those things where he he just doesn't need his costume anymore. You know, Nazis be damned. I'm gonna silhouette myself right in front of the setting sun. It'll be a beautiful <laughs> yeah. shot, and I'll be as conspicuous as I want to be. That's, that's a good point, actually. I'll throw it's up the Indiana Jones middle, signal. Does it's he a see great middle of the moment that? movie too? It's another yeah. one of those moments we were talking about where he's back. You know, he's yeah. on the road more. Put his hat on. <laughs> And you mentioned the uh, the digging song, and suddenly I'm really sad that Chair's not here because that might be his favorite aspect of the entire it is. movie. It is. Is that song? Yeah, Chrissy, did singing. he did he go around singing it a lot when you guys were kids? Oh well, we all do. Yeah, we do do. <laughs> yeah, we still do. Yeah, still do. <laughs> we all, we still do. How do you get anything yeah. done without it? No, yeah, a... that's that's right. We actually <laughs> a... had a uh, we had an, uh, an Egyptian exchange student. Um, I was over there for a summer, and then we had uh, an exchange student come back for um, uh, live in our house. So we asked him, of course, this is 85, so we asked him to translate. And um, he did translate it for her, and that was very kind of him. And he said it was a fishing song. And what it means is uh, um, uh, jump up, jump up in the boat. Which, you know, it always struck us as kind of strange <laughs> that they would sing that in the middle of the desert while they're digging as opposed to fishing so you know perhaps the listeners uh would like to uh uh, you know correct us on that perhaps our exchange student was having us on in the mid 80s it wouldn't be the first or last time stupid americans (laughs) yeah they they can't even they don't even know this work song so and we don't so well we've been corrected on our uh pronunciation of denim elliot so now i just said it right and we've been uh praised for uh pete's german pronunciation so maybe somebody out there will be able to uh handle this egyptian uh sea shanty for us (laughs) desert shanty (laughs) that's right digging shanty yeah (laughs) digging shanty Mm -hmm. i like that our uh secret undercover archaeologist makes an appearance here he's he's right there at least some guys standing right behind the digging team with a surveyor's level Uh, really yeah No, no kidding Wait, like he's on the hill with them? Yeah, he's on the hill with them. I, I don't know. He's, he's it belongs in a textbook. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. This, um, we get this uh, sort of poltergeist-like uh, stormy sky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, my note is that this is a obviously not greatly composited shot that I've never minded. For some reason, I don't hold it against this movie that this shot is not done very smoothly i have a theory okay i have a theory about that because i think 
two things are happening, at least for me anyway, whenever I see that shot. First is I think about the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. And because <laughs> sure. it's, it's what the sky looks like before the Red Sea gets parted. Yeah. And it's such a an overt kind of movie movie moment that th- that's where my brain goes. And then secondly, it's also this I think it's the first moment of real fantasy in the film where you are being sort of cued for the fact that there's going to be elements of the fantastic to come in the second half of the movie, um, which makes me really happy because it makes me think about Doc Savage. And that's why I loved Indiana Jones, because it made me think of reading Doc Savage books as a kid. And they always had this element of the fantastic. And so I think it just it's cueing us to, to say it's saying, wow, get ready, everybody. Bigger better, more fantastical, crazy lightning stuff is about to happen. <laughs> well, That's an excellent that point. Indy, I think that Indy feels it too. Because one of my notes for this was he gives a, on one thunderclap, he gives a real weird look at the sky. He looks over his right shoulder and he, he gets a, a nervous worried, look. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking this is totally the first. Worried. He is. And I think it's his first, the first hint of him getting a little nervous about the supernatural. I think it's the first little kink in his veneer of skepticism and he's like man this is is this just weird timing or (laughs) that sky's looking a little bit unrealistic right now (laughs) which i love too it reminds me uh, one thought i had when mitch and i were watching last night was that it reminds me it gives it a mythical quality um the fact that the artifice is so you know prevalent in the shot and it reminds me of that a very similar sky. It's a blue sky in the background of uh, in Conan, when Conan's father is telling him about the riddle of steel at the beginning of Conan the Barbarian, mm-hmm. and he's telling him this this lore. He's giving them him this lore, telling him this legend, and the fact that it looks so phony actually plays into the legend. I think to me, it gives it this mythical. It's like a mythical moment or like a child's memory, and to me, this is uh, very similar to that. Where I also excuse how it's not the greatest special effect right. in the world. It is in a way. It's perfect for the moment of the movie. And it's a perfect artifact of like 1981 state-of-the-art oh, yeah. totally industrial light and magic. Yeah. But that's but a good also, point too that it's like, I mean, the only, we've had this, these super subtle like little gusts of wind when like Marion takes the headpiece out and looks at it or when... Indy realizes that, you know, Belloc's staff is too long because he doesn't have both sides of the headpiece or something. Like, there's little, you know, oh, the little candle flickering. But now you've got this crazy lightning power of God storm going on. That's 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 interesting. I hadn't thought of that before. I mean, so I this... suppose the light beam going through the headpiece and the laser oh, beam. Oh, that's an excellent point. It's pretty fantastic, too. So I guess, you know, maybe <laughs> I'm wrong. Is no, I, 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 a... I think that that makes a lot of sense. Is the blue be... lightning is, is the blue lightning a Star Wars reference? <laughs> I don't think we've uh, seen blue lightning yet in Star Wars at this point, have we? Well, we 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 haven't in this uh, in 1981. Where, but okay. if Han is like um, thinking back to the past, there there have been instances of blue lightning he might have seen on the news or something. <laughs> 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 There's Bank probably up sound Seth. effects in there, right? That sounds the old, like something. The old video footage of Count Dooku or something. <laughs> right. Horse lightning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I also like when the wind comes roaring out of the uh, the well of the souls. It, if you ever played Roller Coaster Tycoon, that sound of the wind is the exact same sound as the r- kids on the roller coaster. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to have to listen. We do have that one. <laughs> That might just be in the sound archive somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody yeah. pulls out for, you might hear those same sounds. You know, it's like the Wilhelm scream of wind noises or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention at the very beginning when, uh, at the very beginning of this minute, Indy uh, is kind of surveying the ground and he hunkers down and he looks exactly like Danny Noonan and Caddyshack lining up his putt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> did not see that one coming wow. <laughs> so we haven't connected Raiders to Star Trek yet but we did connect it to Caddyshack and that's something <laughs> that is something <laughs> technically we have um, a little more of the Scrooge McDuck here too of the sort of western colonialism like we sure Indy do calls yeah. up the diggers like you'd call a dog or a horse like he kind of puts his hand to his mouth and whistles and then he's the only guy not working it's true like he just kind of he works when he wants to work. You uh-huh. know, he gets all excited and then he stops. 
I'm just finally going to say I don't know Scrooge McDuck. When you talk about Scrooge <laughs> McDuck, I actually don't know what you're talking about. And I was, I've been trying to act cool, like, oh, yeah, totally, Scrooge McDuck. But I do not know what you're talking about. That's so I don't Tommy. Know him, I don't know him as the classic comic book character. I know him as Huey Dewey and Louie's uncle in DuckTales, yeah. the cartoon. Right. Yeah. And that's, so I don't know what, what the um, archetypal so, quality of him is. Yeah, was he a colonialist? McDuck. Scrooge McDuck goes and robs an Incan temple and in doing so and he does it with his his uh, nephews there and in doing so we have people in native garb who are totally getting taken advantage of this is 1955 or 1959 comic book and um uh when when he actually steals this um artifact a boulder comes and knocks the whole thing down <laughs> not not kidding that's a great that's actually idea. Where that's from? It's a great <laughs> idea. We should all put it into a movie or so. So Lucas, Lucas talked specifically about that, didn't he? Yep. Yeah, yeah, he did. So. Yeah, you think I'm making it up, Tom? But no, actually. <laughs> no, 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 I believe you. I just Scrooge I... McDuck. Why would I make that up? I don't know. I would. So Scrooge McDuck was an adventurer. I mean, was that was that his thing? No. Well, okay. he what? No, he was just really uh, greedy. So oh, it okay. was fine to go and loot other cultures for their sacred and expensive artifacts and you know you, you might have to destroy the temple doing it hmm. right <laughs> i guess you're right <laughs> <laughs> well uh john and mitch i want to ask you guys uh we try to ask most of our guests about this where would you i mean you obviously love alien and you're excited about raiders where does raiders rank for you in your your pantheon of movies wow that's a that's a tough question i have a tendency because i'm such a a, a movie geek cinephile for so long i have a tendency to categorize my favorites into different categories that's so, the only way you can do it sometimes <laughs> to me i mean you know, greatest films of all time, best made films of all time are one category. This is really high on my favorites as in rewatchability. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think one category most people have is a rewatchability count, you know, and this is really, really high. I've seen this I, I, other than star Wars movies, maybe back to the future is the other movie I've seen more than this movie. Mm -hmm. So that would put it up, I guess, third of, okay. of my favorite movies of all time if you're kind of counting star wars all together i don't know if you should do that but i will for just the purposes of <laughs> of this podcast sure. but this is i mean far and away my favorite indie movie and um just so, so influential on me i think i made that point last minute but that's a good yeah. answer yeah i mean i i i love this movie so much and i i think i like jaws a tiny bit better uh but it's it's up there in my, you know, top 10, top 10 or 15 movies for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Jaws always creeps up when I'm trying to categorize things and, and, and rate things. I'm like, yes, I finally have my, oh wait, Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> for me, that's Close Encounters. Yeah. See, I mean, oh wait, Close Encounters. <laughs> I mean, isn't that, both, when both you just movies. think about that, the role that guy was on is just, it's extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It is just amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to throw something at you just on this subject. Cause I'm going to share this thing that Mitch and I have done a couple of times. or we've done it a lot. I have this theory that besides Stanley Kubrick, I'm just going to knock Stanley Kubrick off of here that Coppola had the best four movies in a row ever made which, with the Godfather, the conversation, the Godfather two and apocalypse now. And Mitch and I kind of play this game where we try to think of four other movies that consecutive movies that compare and Spielberg would have it in the bag if it wasn't for 1941. Yeah. He has that one hiccup <laughs> because you just don't can't beat Jaws. You just can't beat Close Encounters. And I guess it's for my money. You can't beat Raiders. And I think E.T. falls there, too. But if it wasn't for 1941, Spielberg would definitely be on this list. I share that with you because I want listeners out there to get obsessed with this little game. Like we, if you're a, if you're into movies like we are, you'll get you'll fall in a hole trying to figure it out. <laughs> That's Somebody's awesome. four perfect consecutive movies. And you do sort of have to throw out Kubrick, right? Because didn't he have like seven in a almost, row or something? Almost an entire career of yeah. perfect movies if, <laughs> if you're so inclined. But to us, yeah, it's Kubrick's not – we can't count him. So I almost want to count George Lucas just 
because he quit after Star Wars for so long, but then he had to go and make the prequels, and that kind of ruined it. Because he had, like, you know, THX and American Graffiti and Star Wars. Those are all perfect. It would have been yep. really close for him. If he would have made Empire Strikes Back exactly the way it is, then I would give it to him. <laughs> yeah. Well, it yeah. tells me he wouldn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's good i'm gonna spend hours on that <laughs> good luck we're all counting <laughs> thank <on> you <laughs> um well while i do that um where can uh where can guys find the uh the uh i'm sorry where <laughs> i'm all confused i'm trying to think of movies paul verhoeven maybe not we'll think about it um where can people find the alien minute podcast yeah, you can find us over at AlienMinute.com or follow us at AlienMinutePod. You can also uh, – uh, that's on Twitter, by the way. And you can also uh, subscribe to us on iTunes and the Stitcher app. People should definitely do that because it's an awesome show and an awesome movie. I love Alien. Alien's awesome. Does Ridley Scott almost make the list? Does he almost – he doesn't come anywhere close. In my he doesn't opinion. come anywhere close, does he? <laughs> well, he does kind of. I guess his first three are pretty spot on. Yeah, but uh, but man, that might be the end. <laughs> it's kind of the end, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I I think it is. We're What's gonna probably hear from Runner? people. What's that? <laughs> the 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 light that burns twice as bright burns half as long. <laughs> was he talking about Ridley Scott? He was talking about himself. <laughs> Put that line in the script. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, Pete, where can people find our show and talk to us about stuff? Uh, find us at indianajonesminute.com and check us out on Facebook and we're on Twitter and Instagram as well. So everybody, uh, think about some directors, four movies in a row, you can do it, and come back here with your completed papers uh, and we will discuss minute 60. Gosh, 60. We're getting along in this thing. Minute 60 of Raiders of the Lost Ark on the Indiana Jones Minute. We've hit stone! <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> we've hit Jones. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>